What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. JD still playing with bricks at Legoland. Just plugging away. Driving back today. <laughs> oh, he's driving back today. Uh, he's sad. Sad, JD. <laughs> it's all bricked out. His children. Are children. How long is the drive to Legoland? Uh, about five or six hours. Oh, God. Your kids are going to drive you insane. No, iPads, dude. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. Paw Patrol to the rescue. Speaking of kids, today we are jumping back into another Sharks draft class. We are going to, similar to the 2020 class where we went through, talked about their season and where they're going to be next year. We are going to do that with the 2021 draft class. Uh, less exciting than the 2020 class, but uh, the children are our future. So, yeah, kids, hockey. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Scott Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host JD, the Springfield a and to my Gudger College. <laughs> Springfield U. <laughs> Homer's like, I hate Springfield University. <laughs> you went there. You oh, hate yeah. Springfield a and <laughs> I hate them so much. <laughs> I just watched that episode. Uh, Gudger College is a, an amazingly fake, amazing fake college name. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, we all didn't go to Gudger College. I'm going to go to Bovine University. <laughs> <laughs> we call this the killing floor. <laughs> Timmy, <laughs> walks, Timmy walks out, he's like all white. <laughs> uh, uh, Bovine University is really funny. Mm-hmm. Why does my worm sound like a lamb? <laughs> Lisa the Vegetarian, good episode. Really weird Paul McCartney uh, cameo. Uh, really funny Homer and Bart episode. Uh, I love when he says, another Whopper for the copper. Whopper. He wings it at him. <laughs> What's the extra uh, B for? That was a typo. <laughs> B-Y-O-B-B. <laughs> What's the extra B for? It's B-Y-O-B. What's that extra B for? That's a typo. <laughs> uh, Homer put a lot of thought into that, all because uh, Ned had a family reunion. Yeah. Uh, and he was mad that he didn't get an invite to the right. Flanders. Yes. Senor Diddly Ding. This is Senor Flanders. Or Jose Flanders. Uh, he's, he's like, hi, Diddly Ding Dong Diaz, Senor. Yeah. <laughs> it kills me every single time. Uh, Jose Flanders. Anyway, no Jose Flanders here. We are going to go through the uh, Sharky Boys picks from 2021. A little fun fact before we get started here. Uh, in 2013... <laughs> San Jose made seven choices. Mirko Mueller was their round one number 18 pick. He played 185 games. So technically, he doesn't count by like the nerd's definition of an NHLer at nope. 200 games. Also, he just wasn't very good for those 185. <laughs> that too. The <laughs> next six guys are Gabriel Boudreau, Frederick Bergvik, Michael Brodzinski, Gage Osmus, Jake Jackson, and Emil Galimov. If you've never heard any of them, it's because not a single one of those guys <laughs> Goose played eggs. an NHL game. <laughs> Goose eggs. Yes. The 2008, the 2013 draft class is a waste. Uh, absolutely outrageous. But anyway, we're not here to talk about those bums. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe Logan Couture and Nick Benino were drafted in the same year. <laughs> One of them seems a thousand years older than the other. <laughs> Logan Couture has actually played more games than Nick Benino. I know, but it's like, I think it's because of the bald head. That's why. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, 2021, we're going to jump right into it and we're just going to go down the list uh, from round one from Chimpan A to Chimpan Z. Uh, so the Troy McClure today is so good. <laughs> <laughs> they finally, Dr. Zayas is just a great song. Uh, <laughs> could I play the piano? Well, I couldn't before. <laughs> that um, <laughs> that uh, like little riff. Yeah. yeah. And they finally made a monkey out of me. Is uh, Oh my God. It was Earth all along. <laughs> Wait, he says, Oh my God. Just kills me. Uh, Homer, I love the theater. Uh, anyway, first person up. E5, William Eklund. 
And you guys never forget, when we were joking around, when people were joking around and saying, is William Eklund coming back to the Sharks? What's he doing? And we tweeted out that he was drinking hot chocolate in a cabin in northern Sweden. We, that was actually a scoop, and it was real. And we have sources very close to William Eklund that confirmed that that was true. We weren't joking. Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right. We we did a whole profile on, on William Eklund's season. but we spent too, too much time here. But we will, yeah, because we like to jerk it. <laughs> we love to Do talk about William Eklund. So, uh, so William Eklund played... Uh, so the way we're doing this, if you're new to how we do this, uh, we look at where they spent the most amount of time or games played, um, and how they performed in that season. And then we'll kind of look at their projections and where we expect them to be playing, uh, next year. Spoiler, William Eklund will be on the Sharks. And if not, uh, Kyle and I will personally riot, um, to whoever's in charge. <laughs> we will go full Grandpa Simpson, uh, hammering out letters on typewriters to whoever the GM is at the time complaining about William Eklund not playing on the Sharks. So don't tempt us. <laughs> but William Eklund, so he played 29 uh, games with uh, Drew Gardens. Uh, one goal famously, 13 assists, 14 points uh, for a point four eight points per game. Not his best season. We discussed this. Uh, we have many episodes. We many have Mikhail on. Yeah, Mikhail on. Uh, so... Also, comparison, we did this at the halfway points. He had played seven games, had three assists at a point four three, so he did uh, bump that points per game up just a touch. Um, if we look at his, uh, so Byron Bader has a his kind of development, still sees uh, Eklund as an eighty six percent NHLer um, and thirty two percent to be a star producer at point seven uh, career points per game. Again, this is all based on points. So since he didn't score a lot of points this year on a very, very bad SHL team, um, that's why his star probability went down a tad bit. I am not worried at all with um, Eklund's development. I think getting him back in San Jose is going to do wonders. And then pairing him with uh, Bortolo or Hurdle or whomever you prefer, I'm not worried at all about Eklund. He's going to be just fine. So... His full, are you not going to read his full comps? They're funny. No, you want to read? Sorry. Eric Stahl, Dave Gagner, uh, Michael Grenlin, Jeff Friesen, which you would love, and uh, Jesper Bokvist. Uh, Who was that? Oh, Jesper Boquist. Um, there you go. I mean, Eric Stahl is pretty good. Yep. Uh, so, so is Dave Gagner, actually. Dave Gagner. Uh, is he the Kings guy or the Flyers guy? One of the two. Anyway, <laughs> Dave Gagner was good. Yeah. Uh, no, I'd be really sad if uh, William Eklund turned out to be Jeff Friesen of all people. Not not particularly fond of that comp, even though I do love Jeff Friesen. Still want my throwback Jeff Friesen jersey. <laughs> but uh, I'm also not. I don't. We don't need to spend much time on William Eklund. We have literally like a 40 minute episode with Mikhail Holm. Uh, you yeah. can find it. You can go talk to. We've him. talked hours upon hours, and we'll spend hours more this summer talking about William Eklund. And uh, yes, yeah, so. we're just gonna call the William Eklund. Yeah. William Eklund hotline. <laughs> Things that rhyme with William. Trillium. Billium. Billium. <laughs> Contrillion. <laughs> quadrillion. Uh, trillion, uh, And so on down the line. All right. Next person. Actually, before we do that, let's hawk some oh, product. Awesome shit. Yep. Is it me? Am I hawking? It's you. Oh, cars, baby. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to sell my car right now. If anybody needs a 2017 Honda Accord in very good shape. Uh, with 100 <laughs> kilometers on it, uh, silver sedan, uh, Honda Accord Sport, actually. Two sets of tires, both winter and um, low profile summers. Uh, 21,000 Canadian doll hairs. It's just a, practically a steal in the States. But if you're not trying to sell your car and you need parts, you don't want to go to the store. You got to walk in there, find a little nerdlinger behind the computer. He's gonna be like, What kind of car do you have? And you got to be like, Honda Accord Sport. And he's like, Okay, how many doors? Four. How many blah, 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 blah. And then you got to figure it out or you got to go to that stupid book to look for things. You could just do this all from your pocket computer on your phone, saving time and money by going to rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership when you can just do it and go to rockauto.com? They have everything. Carpets, windshield wipers, lights, pumps, belts, Uses all sorts of stuff. Really just check it out and see what they need. 
Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer because Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers like JD for over 20 years. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? They know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Behind the scenes, we call it Rock Hard Auto. But <laughs> One day. <laughs> all right. One day. Uh, coming up next. Benjamin Gojo drafted 81st overall in round three. Plays for the starting of Stang. Yes, the goat row. Uh, so, uh, Ben Gojo, this season, he played uh, 44 Four games. games. Yeah. Uh, 891 save percentage, 371 goals against two shutouts. Uh, the halfway point of the season, he had only played 13 games with the 906. 315 goals against and one shutout. Uh, that Sardia team was not very good, and he got shelled a lot. And I know he did deal with some injuries kind of in the uh, middle to back half of the season as well. But he was lights out in the playoffs. Had a 924 save percentage. Uh, faced like 200 shots in uh, six games. Um, I think it was like 231 shots. 200, uh, 210 shots. And yeah, uh, if I remember my tweet, and it was like 100, uh, it was like 80 shots more than his counterpart goaltender in the same six games or whatever. So that, that 924 is sparkling. Uh, I think this was an excellent, excellent choice. Uh, yeah. they, they, they've got to be happy with the way he's trending. Yeah. And again, goalies, or because you know, I mean, we know how much it depends on th- who's in front of you. Uh, so, yeah, I think Adro, he's in like some. You see the the flashes, and you s- just his, uh, you know, his ability to get from side to side, make those highlight reels, but also just making the se- the easy saves as well. Like he's just he's very technically sound as well. So, um, I think he's going to very exciting prospect still for the Sharks um, in the goal the pipeline. Uh, his fancy stuff. So, uh, so again with him, it's weird because he didn't have his draft season had zero games because of the OHL just didn't play that year. Um, so he's nineteen percent uh, NHL probability. Uh, it's <clears throat> tougher with goalies, kind of how they project again. So uh, his comps. Patrick oh, Lalini, that shit, that shit, insane. How do you go from Patrick Lalini to Patrick Roy? I don't know, man. Uh, but <clears throat> Alexander Gregoryov, Ontario, Demaki, David Abishnik, Abish. Anyway, Abisher, Abisher. Thank you. He was Patrick Roy's backup for the longest time, which so. is hilarious. Um, I can take it from here. Get a drink of water. Go ahead. <laughs> You're struggling through Benjamin Gojo. You're like, ah, uh, or have a Coke. Either one. Um, I don't know how you get full comps of Lalim, Nidamaki, Abisher, Gorgiev, and then also Patrick Roy. Uh, don't know how that works. But anyway, don't really think there's much to be worried about Benjamin Gojo. He's going to be back with the Sting next year. I yes. don't. They're, the goalies, San Jose has a bunch of goalies. They have three on their NHL team. But then yep. they also have uh, Sachenko, Straussman, Straussman, Iman, Iman, and possibly Big Chungus, Magnus Krona. I think uh, he's going back to school. I think he so is too. Um, you kind of, the way I, I kind of pictured it is it's probably going to be whoever's in the NHL. Uh, then don't forget Alex Stalock. God rest his soul. I think still, he's a free agent, right? He is a free agent. But Okay, uh, good. Get out of here. He will not be back. Uh, But you're you're gonna have some sort of uh, Straussman, Sachenko, Iman combo, Chimera, (laughs) uh, (laughs) uh, Menage a Trois, and and then uh, your next guys are gonna be your your Ben Cadro and uh, uh, Cronus Magna or Magnus uh, Cronus. Magnus Crona. Yes. Cronus Magna is a cool name, though. That's good too. So Cronus, comma Magna, uh, those uh, those are going to be your kind of next guys you're going to take over. So uh, and they, yeah. they could they could draft a goalie this year. I doubt it, but uh, you know. I, that'd be an interesting. We'll we'll dig into that. Um, but I feel like their pipeline is way more robust than it was two years ago. I think. Yeah, it's first. robust though in like that there's actual humans, but like what are the ceilings of Amon Sachenko man? Like Strauss man was like a four year Michigan guy who was fine, but like 
He's he's probably like an NHL backup type of guy, but yeah, like maybe, but like I, I don't. There's no top top shelf uh, goalie prospects. Or you're like, he, right as, well, as much as we like Goudreau, <laughs> I don't think you can say that he's like a for sure starter in the NHL yet. Like he's still developing. No, he's still developing, but I mean, he was considered, you know, maybe the second or third goalie prospect in that draft class, and well, if, definitely third because Wallstead and Kosa were both existed. Yeah, but uh, you know, if but if he had played his actual draft year, mm. uh, I think. I mean, I don't think Gojo goes from the third round to uh, possibly first overall with Wallstead, and Kosa went like twelfth. That was a dumb pick by Co- for Kosa. Well, anyway. I mean, yes, but uh, it's it's fine to be thir- the third best goalie in the draft class, and I think they did fine. I just it, yeah. it's not like they have Kosa or Wallstead or Askarov or Dostal or Knight or Wolf or something. They don't have a, an elite goalie prospect the best one is Gaudreau who we're fine with but like yep. they're still that now that upper tier goalie but which is fine um who knows Ben Gaudreau might go back and put up a 925 in the OHL next year and be absolutely amazing a better team or something like that yeah yeah so. I don't have no and please don't ask us if this thing are going to be better next year neither of us know <laughs> sure they're going to be better <laughs> all right thing. moving along Gannon LaRock drafted 103rd overall in the fourth round a shocker on draft day because nobody knew who he was it, yeah, uh, we talked to guys who, you know, cover and they're like, yeah, we didn't watch any Victoria Royals because they were Why so bad. <laughs> yeah, they were they were bad. But um, the team's improved and Gannon Rock has been a reason why that team has improved. He's been their top defenseman. Um, he won the uh, WHL, whatever their division. He was the top defenseman in their division, uh, played 63 games, 10 goals. Uh, 42 assists for 52 points and a 0.83 points per game. Looking at the midway point, so he had played, or when we first did it, uh, he played 20 goal or 20 games, had three goals, 13 assists uh, for a 0.8. So he was pretty consistent with them all year long. Uh, played with a Cuda at the end of the season and didn't look out of sorts at all on that team, you know, especially when he's playing guys who are literally twice his age. Um, he's a big boy he can move i think uh once he he we he said that he wanted to work on his offense and he worked on his offense this season um and how, and how. so we're gonna we're definitely uh we're planning to have him on this summer um so we'll ask him what his the thing he's gonna work on next i would assume it's probably gonna be his transition game and getting starting that transition game because that was the kind of the thing i noticed uh he deferred with in the barracuda which is fine again he's 18 and was playing with grown-ass men but um this might be the the kind of diamond in the rough pick that the sharks uh drafted in the fourth round and then you know he could play 10 12 years with the sharks and you're just looking at a solid second pair defenseman who's just does it all type of thing for the sharks down the line so um definitely he, going back to victoria he's going back to victoria again he's uh he's we can't stress this enough he's 18 he doesn't turn 19 until august like he barely I, makes the cut for the, for the draw so the thing too is that he really needs to have another good season like if he just has one yes. randomly good season because like everything converged is not really a prospect does make so yeah. he needs to continue to approve um and get better otherwise the sharks just have a guy who had one random good junior season which happens all the time yep uh so he his star probability uh remained flat at three percent nhl probability jumped from 21 to 38 percent um so for defensemen it's 0.45 career points per game as um his comps mike riley madison bowie tobias (laughs) tobias tobias boy uh Sammy Ratnan, Nikita Zadorov. So, Gannon Rock, though, he is, uh, yeah, looking like he might be a uh, nice a pleasant find surprise so sh- far. Yeah, ni- that's, really, might- that's really all you can say. Like, uh, he was drafted out of nowhere, but they wanted defensemen that were smart and could skate, and that's what they got. And hopefully, the other things come along. And yeah. so far, their hunch was right. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's all you can say. Um, and he's a yeah, he's a big boy. All he cares about is playing hockey. And you it's can true, tell. we talked to him. Literally, yeah. all he cares about is um, playing hockey. Yep. But he's got he's got to keep improving. You can't you can't just have one good random junior season. You gotta you gotta have another good season. If he has another good season next year, then he's definitely gonna be with the Cuda after that, and he's yep. on his way. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, moving along, 
This one's fine. To, uh, before we go, though. Oh, yeah. I should probably take a break. <laughs> a Hawks and stuff? Yeah. Uh, let us talk about let our us. good friends over at Built Bar because talking about all these prospects, I don't know about you, but they make makes me hungry. So just thinking about all this, how awesome the Sharks are going to be one day. I'm very hungry. With summer coming, and you want to make sure you're, uh, you've got plenty of food when you're on the go. Built Bar is the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacation. Throw them in your bags and your kids' backpacks. Make sure everyone has a bar so you're fueled for your summertime adventures. And if you don't know what type of flavor to get, don't worry. They've got you covered. You can get a mix box. It comes with 12 different flavors of bars and puffs. You know what the puffs are? You haven't tried them yet? They are the first ever protein-infused marshmallows covered in 100% chocolate. They come in amazing flavors like banana cream pie. And you guys know we are a pro cream pie podcast. They have churro. Who doesn't like the taste of churro? They're only 140 calories, so sign me up. Go check out uh, Built.com. All your favorites, banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, they're all delicious, and they have new flavors coming out all the time. So when you visit built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Tobias! <laughs> I just want to yell Tobias. Anyway, moving on. Number 121, fourth round, Ethan Cardwell. So Mr. Cardwell was an overager when they drafted uh, him. So yeah, he was actually gone. eligible for the 2021 uh, draft. No, the 2020, 2020 draft. draft. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he had a, a little bit of a slow start, but really picked it up in the second half of the season. Um, he played 49 games. He had a massive, uh, sus- like a 15 game suspension for uh, breaking a, some dude's leg. Yeah, he basically just ended a man. Um, 23 goals, 35 assists, 58 points for a 1.18 uh, points per game. Uh, we did our last check-in. He had at 18 games played, four goals, 12 assists for 16 points and a 0.89. So he really turned it on um, in the second half of the season and became a consistent scoring threat for the Barry Colts. Um, kind of a quiet... I think he had a couple goals in the, the playoffs for them, but... Um, he, but you do like to see that, um, uh, kind of that scoring from him. So he, he can score definitely like he's got a bit of a shot and definitely not a Gushin, but, um, he can also score in the dirty areas. Like he's ha- one of those type of guys where he can kind of do a little bit of everything with his scoring. Um, so his star probability. So he, this is his technically his D plus two season, um since he didn't uh and then he also lost the season with the ohl not playing a year so his development probably a little bit behind where it should be because he just literally lost an entire season but it's good to see him kind of picking it up and and playing well the second half of the season um eight percent eight percent and then a three percent star probability producer um up to, he's at an 18 percent nhl probability so that's playing 200 plus games in the nhl uh, his comps, Chris Drury, uh, Johan Larson, Adam Cracknell, Nick Dowd, and Matthew Barnaby. Um, he will Those be are the- terrible. Those are terrible. But he will be on the CUDA next year. Um, so By he- virtue of him not being able to go back. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, he can't go back. But he'll be on the CUDA next year with those guys. So I'll be interested to see how he does playing with, like, Co and... and- you know, all Gushin the, and Raska Oz- and Hobgavex and the Lord. And yeah, he's also a winger. I don't know why they have him as a center, but he's definitely a winger. Like, yeah, type of thing. So, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be I'm I want to see him with kind of some more more talent around him and how he does with these guys. So, but yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's a guy to keep an eye on. I don't think he makes the Sharks next year, but he could be no. one of those guys who uh maybe a year from now where he gets called up at some point and, and gets some games in yeah i think like. i think realistically he's in the cuda for a few years here yep. um and then just keeps because he's got to improve off that back half of the ohl season and keep moving the moving the wheel forward because like now we're getting around four five six seven where your development really has to go forward uh in order for you to make the team and it gets harder mm-hmm. uh, the longer we get into this so 
He's the only other guy that'll be playing pro next year. Everybody else will be going back. So um, moving right along. Yes. Round five, uh, number 130, 135, Artem Guryev. So Mr. Guryev, he missed a big chunk of this season uh, with an injury when we last did the check-in. He had four games played. I think he had wrist, if I remember correctly, it was a uh, wrist uh, surgery or something. A uh, wrist surgery, if I yeah, if I recall correctly. So um he played 37 games, had one goal, uh, 11 assists, 12 points for a nice 0.32 points per game. Um again, it's I think for him with injuries kind of derailed the beginning of his season so it was probably a little bit hard for him to get going i don't think he's gonna be one of those guys he lights up um so i don't really have too too much on him to be honest i think he's he probably he's gonna need some more season i want to see next year how he does um maybe coming in healthy i know the peats were a solid team you know but they're not like a world beaters or anything like that so uh yeah 1% 1% star probability, 7% NHL. Uh, We're going to move quickly through these last few guys. <laughs> yeah. So, um, also insane that his full comps are John Erskine, don't know who that is, then Sergey Gonchar, who's going to the Hall of Fame, and then yeah. uh, Mike Wilson, Nate Guerin, and Alex Henry, three dudes I've never heard of in my entire life. Don't know yep. how Sergey Gonchar gets in there, but if he turns out to be Sergey Gonchar, holy hell. Douglas, <laughs> I will, Douglas please. Jr. deserves $20 million a day. That would be insane. Um, He's going back to the Pete's. I, I, yeah. These last couple of guys really were not much to say other than that they're going back to the, their league. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, next guy, 156, fifth round from the London Knights. Uh, Max McHugh. Max McHugh. So, uh, McHugh, he. What a picture can, choice, JD. It is. It's a good picture. So, uh, <laughs> 64 games played, uh, nine goals, 26 assists, 35 points and a 0.55 points per game i believe he also had a hat trick in the uh playoffs as the london knights lost in the game seven in the first round uh halfway point of the first check-in we did 22 games played six goals 10 assists 16 points uh Ooh, so he did he kind of declined. declined a little bit there too he was i mean down... he scored three goals in 30 games uh compared to six in like 22 yeah so Ugh. Yep, uh, he did kind of. I know he was bouncing around on like that third and fourth line, but uh, you know, we're him and uh, and Gilmartin, who we'll talk about here in a minute. They're going to have a their chance to shine next year, especially with the that kind of top line of the London Knights uh, go moving on. Where I think next year is going to be a big year for them to be able to kind of. Uh, really kind of take control and, and have some more opportunity because and the other nice they know how to develop guys i mean they, they just pump out players all the time so uh star probability zero percent nhl probability eight percent um cool <laughs> comps travis boyd christopher n paul gasted lucas sadok and jack adams so sad luck anyway jack adams <laughs> jack adams oh yes my God. Uh, uh, paul, paul gostad was like serviceable for buffalo for a, a while but it's not like he's like lighting the world on fire um, yeah so but yeah, i think though with like i said with him and uh who gil barton they're gonna have a, their chance next year with, with that top line of of london they're all those guys are all gonna be playing in the uh you know hl and stuff like that yeah so you're really just taking swings at these guys. Um, next guy, sixth round, 167th overall, Liam Gilmartin, who played with Pax McHugh. Yes. Uh, Gilmartin, he was on the second line a lot, so with them, uh, so he got a little bit more run. Uh, 55 games, 16 goals, 18 assists, 34 points, had a 0. .62 points per game uh, when we checked in. First time, 19 uh, games played. Five goals, five assists, 10 points, so 0.53. So he definitely uh, kind of bumped that up a little bit as the season went on. Uh, and then his stuff, 2% star probability, 11% nhl probability. Comps, Brandon McMillan, Troy Terry, who is still a rookie, but has also played five years at the same time for the Ducks. <laughs> Andrews Bjork, David Moss, and Chris Foucault. Um, so... I've never heard of Chris Fuko. No, uh, me neither. To be fair, I've never also heard of Brandon McMillan. But anyway, um, they're just taking swings on these guys. I, I kind of like the Gilmartin pick. I think there could be something there. Like there's a little nugget, like a lot more than McHugh, Guryev, the next mm-hmm. guy. 
Um, it'd be interesting to see how Gil Martin does next year, but I mean, these guys aren't like really lighting the world on fire. Yep. Uh, sixth round, 177th overall, Theo Jakobsen. All right. So, uh, our boy Theo, so he like started to eat somebody's soul in this photo. <laughs> yeah. He has great hair too. I couldn't find another, an updated picture of his great hair, but he started the season in the SHL. So his, the beginning of his season went, was really poor. Then he jumped back down to, uh, the, the under 20, uh, league and he really lit it up down there. So I think he was kind of in that, uh, tweener, uh, status where he's not quite good enough to be playing meaningful minutes. So they sent him down to let him play, uh, on the, uh, J 20 or, uh, or so yeah the j20 team so um instead of playing with uh yeah mondo hockey and the hockey else skin um so we're gonna look at his kind of back half of this season here so i kind of broke my own rule and, and wanted to look at the back half of the season so uh back half he played 24 games had 18 goals 14 assists and a 1.33 points per game again with his SHL time, he played 23 games. Well, Moto, Moto only played he, – he didn't play in the SHL. He actually – Moto actually was relegated sorry, to the Hockey, hockey Allsven skin, which is surprising. Yeah, sorry. Thank you yeah. uh, for that correction. But anyway, so yes. Uh, uh, he had – during that time, he had 23 games, two goals, one assist, three points, and a .13. And I think he was like a fourth liner slash healthy scratch type of guy. Um, but yeah, when he went back, got bumped down, lit it on fire. So – um, next year, he definitely needs to be playing like all Svenskin, all Svenskin the whole time, and try to really stick there for him to ha- to have a chance to um, do. Yeah, any- get it, gonna be a longer tail uh, yeah. with some of these European guys where you, you might not see him till he's like twenty two or twenty three or something like that, um, where he's played four or five years pro already. Yep. Um, and hopefully, you can obviously if Moto doesn't get promoted to the SHL, then he's stuck in the all skin, but you definitely, like you said, you want to see him be in the all skin all next year and play well. Yep. Uh, 6% star probability, which is pretty high for a six round pick here type of, you know, yeah. uh, late 37% NHL or probability, uh, comps, Derek Grant, uh, David, uh, Crunchy, Derek Stepan, Mike Amato, and Andre Atheson. So, uh, who's fast? <laughs> Athanasio? Yeah. yeah. He's just very fast. Uh, very David cool. Krejci is like legitimately like Hall of Very Good. Uh, yep. That would be, that would, and Derek Stepan was good for a while there too. So Derek, he might, Derek Grant sucks. Yeah. He, he might be one of those guys who stews over in, in Switzerland for a couple of, you know, like you said, for a couple of years and then he comes over and, and kind yeah, of. that's 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 what you that's what you hope for. Um, yep. So um, it's it's looking like a, a pretty sneaky good pick, uh, judging by his J twenty numbers this year. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be pretty happy with what's going on there. Next year is yeah, he's he kind of yeah, just can keep improving and, and see what was what they end up with. And finally, the last guy, seventh round, one hundred and ninety ninth overall, Yevgeny Kashnikov. Yes, Kashnikov plays for the uh, Gatineau Olympics. That was my terrible French uh, and the QM uh, JHL. 62 games played. Actually, I didn't need to. That might be a little off because they were still playing when I made these graphics because the Quebec, what he just Quebec plays does their own thing. They do their own thing. So when I made the graphics, 62 games played, 13 goals, <laughs> 19 assists, 32 points. Uh, he was like their third pair defenseman and he had 0.52 points per game. Uh, again, the Q definitely uh, not known for their South defense, but <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually ended up with no, that's right. That's what he finished the season. With. Okay. So uh, when we checked on the last 24 games played six goals, nine assists, 15 points at a point six three. So he did kind of dip a little bit in the points per game, but again, he's like their third pair defenseman. If your third pair defenseman is putting up a half a point a game, your team's probably really good. So uh, yeah, it, points. So his points are, are going to favor him, you know, because he's going to put up a bunch of points in the queue, but uh 3% star probability, 34% NHL or, um he's a big boy six foot four 198 so you know how much uh coaches love size because you can't teach size also born on christmas good for him uh comps robert hag andrew peak jeff schultz bruno gervais and <laughs> good friend 
Mirko! <laughs> Mirko Mueller. Ah, nice to see you. <laughs> Mirko is... Mueller has one of the greatest tweets of all time where his sister was on the like, Swiss national team and he was like, yeah, well, she's better than me or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Um, also, I would like to point out that Gatineau has a guy on their team drafted by Coyotes named Manix Landry. That's name. amazing. <laughs> so... Uh, 34% NHL probability is is quite high for a guy that was drafted 199th overall. Yeah, I think it's because he's a big Russian boy and he puts up a ton of points and a, puts up a lot of a, points. Yes. So um I, I think I think the I think the Sharks are probably happy with Eklund Goudreau, uh Larocque. Mm-hmm. And then probably you, happy on Cardwell, but he he's older, so you, you want to see him continue. And then at least he's a little bit shorter, yeah. Yeah, Gurry of McHugh is whatever. It's a tale of three drafts. First three picks, loving them. Middle three picks, probably not. Last three picks, loving what they're doing for you yep. when you drafted them. 167, 177, and 199. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, and even Obviously, like, I, like I said with the, the London Knight guys, the the way they develop there, like they just pump out people and they have a plan. And, they, you know, like those guys, it's not like they're just, you know, when they – they have to kind of like work their way up and, and go through the development and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if Gil Martin McHugh, you know, if one of those guys pops next season with, with some bigger numbers. Um, but yeah, you would like to see that happen this season. But again, there's the guy like strangers and those guys are putting up like a hundred points each for the London night. So why, kind of, why, is it why Johnson on that team? I think he led the, uh, no, the he was, I think he's on the fire bur- Flint Firebirds. Flint? Right? Flint. Yeah. Really? Interesting. I think so, if I remember correctly. So, uh, uh, no, they have Evangelista from the Preds uh, for London Knights. Uh, you were close with the Flint Firebirds. He's on the yeah. Windsor Spitfires. Okay, close. The same, same, so, but different. <laughs> they're all the same. <laughs> they're all the same. Uh, yeah. So, obviously, too early to really make like big sweeping generalizations about the 2021 draft class, mm-hmm. but that's where they are. If you are interested in asking us about any of them, please do on the internet. Locked on Sharks at. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Locked on Sharks and YouTube, Locked on Sharks at gmail.com. Close to 800. Email. Getting yeah. close to 800. Push us over the edge and then mm-hmm. 200 more people. Where's those bot farms at? I know. Please. We, we, cheer for, we cheer for a Silicon Valley team. Come on, bot farms. We don't uh, ask for much in this world. <laughs> we don't. Amazon, Spotify, Apple, Locked on Sharks. JD, returning from Legoland, hungover, drunk on Lego Rage <laughs> at my fry hole. Kyle, not just, just drunk. Just drunk. <laughs> just drunk. <laughs> uh, at Kyle Demetrius. Thank you guys for making us your first San Jose Sharks listen. Um, go check out one of the other locked on shows like the Locked On NHL as the playoffs go on. I can't believe that thing happened last night in the playoffs that everyone's talking about. Wow. Wow. I am shocked and or appalled, whichever is the appropriate uh, response. Or if no games were played last night, I'm shocked and appalled that there was no games last night. What are we doing here? <laughs> so, um, or go check out any other amazing podcasts on the Locked On Network, such as Locked On Jaguars. Bye, friends. It's not a Jaguar. It's a Jaguar. Jaguar.